if you just start doing it without asking them, no, out. <laughs> That's what's gonna happen. Hi, I'm Dexter, and let's talk Caribbean genealogy. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to talk to people that are living with dementia about family history. As a physician, I look after people with various forms of dementia and do have to ask them questions from time to time. I have a lot of experience professionally and personally interviewing people that have cognitive problems. Now a lot of us immediately think when we're doing our genealogy research that we must find the oldest person in the family and then bombard him with lots of questions and just sort of say, do you know, do you, do you know? That is not the approach and it doesn't even have to be the oldest person but sometimes some younger people may be affected. The reason why you've got to think about doing this very carefully is that well, just because someone has a diagnosis of dementia does not mean that they're now useless for your research. Oftentimes, distant memories are the last things to go and you just need to use some strategies in order to unlock some of those memories. There's been a lot of research done into reminiscence therapy. Sometimes talking about things from the distant past can help people feel much more confident and less upset by you know not knowing things from you know recent events. They may not immediately have it on the tip of the tongue but you need to ask questions more about experiences, feelings, and storytelling is so crucial. And sometimes you just may want to just sit and just have a little story time. Ask them about events that may have occurred and what it was like at that point in time. If people can talk about the war, people can talk about different aspects of history. So in some places, you know, were you there during independence? How would you compare things then and now? You can ask them, you know, when was the last time that you traveled to that particular location? Who was still living there? How did it feel when you went there? And what was the weather like? What was the smell in the air like? Were there the smell of fruit trees? Was it ocean? Was it fish? Was it, you know, or was it like the city, like were they, are they from a, a more urban area? Some of those questions can open up quite a lot of memories. Just go at the pace they want to go at and don't pressure, just listen and they will open up. If you need to take a break, take a break. Sometimes after you've turned off the, the recording and you're thinking that you're about to leave, then they then come up with something <laughs> that you weren't expecting and you just need to be prepared to just turn the recorder right back on. Sometimes that might be the last time that that's going to come out or that the last time that you'll be able to get it out. So just make sure that you keep your ears open for anything like that that might come out and then you can then cross check the information. If they say a wrong date, don't stop them and correct them. Don't interrupt. That's not what you're there for. You've got to be really sensitive and understand how to go about framing questions and you first off have to ditch the idea of questions. What you need to start off with is where is it that you're talking to this person? Is this in a familiar location? Are you in their home? Are you in a place that they feel comfortable in? Does it have photographs or any things that might be conversational pieces that you might be able to use to open the conversation? In the current climate, you may not be able to physically visit and you may only be doing this via telephone or via video call, which does make this challenging. The way that you could start with this, which I find you know, quite helpful, is you just have a, a, a general conversation to start off with and you orient that person as to who you are and who they're speaking to and do that from time to time because in the middle of the conversation they may lose track. Dementia is an overall term and you've got different types of dementia. You've got Generally, Alzheimer's disease is the most common, and then you've got dementia with Lewy bodies, and the way how these, these are different, um, Alzheimer's disease that typically is affecting your memory, but also the way that you process uh, 
visual information and navigating in different locations and it can also affect um, some of your ability to do calculations and your judgment over time but everyone is affected differently dementia with Louis bodies is similar in terms of having memory problems but there are lots of fluctuations over time so you might be having a, having a conversation with someone with DLB now and then they may have a hallucination and get distracted by that and then they then forget what they were talking about and sometimes the cognition sort of goes up and down people with behavioral variants come to temporal dementia these are more rare conditions and they have behavioral problems and you just need to be mindful of that but don't ever challenge people if they say something that is a little bit odd just change the subject or reorient them to the task if they've got a behavioral problem you just need to just get to know that person and their likes and dislikes before you start asking them their questions and this may have to happen over multiple visits and that's just how it is people may have other con conditions like a vascular cognitive impairment or some speech production problems you just need to be aware of that and talk with people that know them a little bit better before you interview them so that you know where you're, you're, you're going with things you've got to make sure now that you've removed distractions you need to get the phone off on silent or take the, the receiver off of the, the the handset to make sure that it won't ring and, and distract things that people around know not to make too much noise and put the kettle on, have their favorite flowers or something with you that will you know, put them at ease and reorient them as to who you are and how you're connected to the family. Then tell them, you know, well, you've been working on doing this research and then you can share some of what you found and that will really get them going because then they may actually then start um, having some memories that they will then want to share with you. You've got to have a list of questions with you in your mind, but more so in terms of what information you'd like to get out of, of, of this and don't be fixated on that uh, because what typically happens is that um, you'd have your set of questions and you ask them and then they will may not give you very much and then you think that you've all is lost and then all of a sudden while talking about something else they then start giving you all of the information that you wanted when it's coming up take it and just ask permission before you start doing any recording and ask if they're happy with whatever modality that is if it's video or if it's audio nika sewell smith has a really great guide on how you can go about doing this. Um, I'll put a link to her website where you can get her um, interviewing crib sheet. She's got a list of lots of really good questions that you can take with you as a, as a backup. Ask some questions now about experiences, not about the specific facts. What was it like growing up on your street when you were a child? And then so you've asked a really open-ended question there and you may actually then get the names of siblings, names of neighbours and any particular games that they played or any people that visited, you may get some of that. You may get the name of the school that they went to and you know where it was located in relation to their, their home and who was living at home, you know, and all of that. You can get, you know, quite a, a lot by just asking an open-ended question like that. And if there's something that was particularly interesting that was said, give them a moment to finish saying what they're saying or getting the thoughts that they've got out first and make a note of that thing that you thought was interesting and don't interrupt them at that point in time. But after they've finished saying what they're saying, then you can then ask a follow-up question. A little while ago you mentioned Miss so-and-so. Can you tell me a little bit more about about her. So if there was a, a relative that you already knew a little bit about and you wanted to know a bit more, you can ask some really nice open-ended questions. One that I like to ask is um, if they were religious and went to church, were they a member of the church choir? Did they go to any other activities at church like Sunday school? Did they volunteer in any aspects of the upkeep of the church and then you can find out some really amazing stories. One of my grandfathers, his favourite hymn was Abide With Me and from talking to my mother this was a hymn that he sang quite often at wakes 
and people would ask him to perform the last rites for some uh, children that, that died as, as babies or, or young children. By asking that question about the hymn that he always sung, I then found out about all of this other information that just came out from my mother where I didn't, I had never heard of that before. If I hadn't asked that particular question, then I wouldn't have got any of that other information. So it's really important to just ask some simple questions and then shut up, stop talking and just listen. You don't want to overstay your welcome. If you get any resistance, just back up a bit and just understand a little bit where that resistance might be coming from. And if it's something that's particularly sensitive that they don't want to talk about, leave it alone. They may then just actually just tell you later on, you know, that this is what happened um, and that's the reason why they don't want to talk about it. But just ask them if they would like you to keep that information confidential. Some people may say, well, just hold that one until I'm gone, they might tell you. Just be really respectful and ask, you know, what they're comfortable with with because you know it might be something that they've been holding on to for quite some time and it's it's not your place to then unravel them because these highly emotional types of conversations can Im negatively impact cognition as well and you may not get anything else from them ever again because you've you've re-traumatized them. After you've now got this information and you've documented it, you need to schedule a follow-up time to go back to them and show them what you've done with it. Just ring them up and tell them, well, thank you very much for the information that you shared and thank you so much for the time that you spent. It has really helped my research in this way. I've now been able to do this. The satisfaction you have now given them that they have actually been useful and they've helped you move your research along is going to be something that they will be proud of and that good feeling may actually unlock some more memories that they may then start sharing with you. Just someone taking interest in them is all they want and they want to feel included in what's going on and you can get some really meaningful participation. Some other things that you can do, you can ask them to tell you about some photographs that they may have around and don't ask necessarily who is that in that picture. You may not know the name anymore or the name might be sort of under a layer of other information just need to ask oh that person is wearing a very nice hat or that dress that looks very nice that must have been a special occasion that question now is gonna unlock oh yes we were really well dressed that day and we were actually attending the wedding of so and so and then you then get all of this information and you're like oh <laughs> as opposed to saying who's I in that photo then you're like oh I don't know just ask these questions in a kind and compassionate way and just taking genuine interest. Use visual cues that are around and this reminiscing often is quite helpful. My mother, she's mildly affected. Involving her and having conversations and having her contribute to what I've been working on, she's really enjoyed it. She remembers different things from the distant past and she has taken the time to pair some recollections of her youth and I, I wasn't expecting this at all. I've cross-checked with the, the documents and this was correct. She was on the phone and said, I must talk to you right now before I forget all of this. It's very important that you record me now. And so I was like, okay. And I dropped what I was doing. She had her prepared bullet points of what she wanted to say. And I've recorded it and the information is actually quite good. And there are some really nice stories. These distant memories, they're still there. And the fragments, you just need to have some time. Don't discount these little things because sometimes one word, one emotion can unlock memories. Now you've got to this point in the video, here's a bonus. How do you record an interview? You want to make sure that you record the name of the person that's speaking, the date that you're speaking on, the, and the time and the location. And you want to make sure that you've, you've got that on there, just in case the file name gets uh, messed up for some reason. At least when you play it, it will say <laughs> that this is who's talking and when it was recorded. You want to then make sure 
you've got clear consent before you even start doing doing any more because you want to reconfirm that so if this is how you actually conduct your your interview we set everything up and we've got this nice location it's quiet and we took away all of the distractions and we've got some some tea biscuits or some cake or cup, some, something nice that 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 person you know, likes and you just have an informal conversation you take your recorder out which can just be a mobile phone now and just ask is it okay if I record this for being able to make sure I don't miss anything are you okay if I do a video of you telling this story now or are you would you prefer me to only record the sound you're ensuring that they've got autonomy in this situation and that you're not just coming in and, and come to take from them but most people are all right if you if you do that but if you just start doing it without asking them no out <laughs> that's what's gonna happen so just be respectful don't discount people just because of their diagnosis you will be missing out on quite a lot of really rich information you just have to know how to ask the questions without asking the questions if you like this video give me a thumbs up and subscribe you've watched all of this just subscribe you know you want to subscribe watch my getting started video to learn how you can start doing your Caribbean genealogy research see you on the next one <laughs>